Hello everybody, I'm Atish. I work for Western Digital Systems Software Research and today I'm going to talk about Perf on Risk 5. So what <clears throat> we'll be discussing how Perf is implemented on Risk 5, what is what exists at today and what we're working on and what the future holds for Perf running Perf on Risk 5. Now here's a brief overview of uh, today's talk. Uh, first, we'll start with a brief introduction of Perf. Then we'll move to the risk five specifications that are required uh, for Perf and uh, what are the improvements that have happened recently with those specifications. Now, second, uh, we move to the implementation part where what exact, uh, where is the status of the implementation of those specifications? And at the end, uh, I'll show you a demo Perf running in KMU uh, uh, live. Now, what exactly is POF? So if it would have been a, a actual physical present presentation that uh, some of you are present at the venue, I would have asked this question and then we would have idea to get a feel of the room thing, how many actually of you have used POF. Since POF is so generic tool, I'm assuming the answer would be most of you know already the POF. Most, most of you know already what is Perf, but for those who have not uh, used Perf, it's an official, <coughs> sorry, it's an official Linux profiler tool that uh, is used to uh, instrument any kind of uh, performance counter of CPU or a trace points or K probes or U probes. Now we use this when to analyze your workload where your workload is slugging, where uh, the pitfalls are, where your workload is performing bad. To figure out those uh, pain points, we use profiler tools such as Perf. Now, this talk is not about how Perf works in Linux. There are so many good tutorials, uh, some of them by Brandon Gregg and some of them are by others. In the internet, you can find them, you can Google them, uh, you can find them by Googling it and uh, they go into lengthier details in what exactly is Perf and how you can use them. If you want, you can go ahead and do that. But this talk is about how Perf is implemented in RISC-V. So we are talking about the performance counters in RISC-V and how Perf leverages those performance counters so that we can have a feature complete a Perf on RISC-V which is on par with any other architecture. Now, before diving into the details of the specification and what uh, going on, what's the present start, uh, what's the present status of the development, let's take a look at whether it's uh, what's the current status. So, in upstream Linux, you must uh, might have seen already there's a perf already available. So, what I'm going to talk about here, if the perf is support is already there. So, to clarify, what uh, perf support is there is very minimal and not very useful <coughs> because uh, it, it's been upstream from last three years but uh, all those three years uh, it's, uh, it's not, it was not improved uh, the, for the reasons uh, that I'll explain later but uh, even if what, what support was exists currently it's only to monitor a cycle and instruction count which are running always so you cannot start or stop them or not, neither you can use any of those programmable counters. You can't sample any of those events because there is no support for overflow interrupt. Now, <clears throat> let's look at the specifications that uh, we need. So, as I said in the previous slide, uh, there are reasons why all the details of the of were not supported because there are missing pieces in the specification. So uh, before discussing the missing pieces in specification, let's try to understand what exactly uh, is in the specification as of now. So current privilege specification specifies three fixed counter. One of them is a uh, cycle and instruction count and then 29 programmable counters. And there are uh, 29 event selector registers corresponding, corresponding to those 29 programmable counters. Now those event selector values tell that which performance event is going to be monitored using this counter. 
Now the problem with this uh, is the problematic part is these counters are only readable or writable from machine mode. So risk five machine mode is the highest privilege mode. And on top of that, there is supervisor mode where your rich operating system such as Linux runs. Now supervisor mode, mode can read the value of these uh, registers, but by a different CSR, which is known as HPM counter X, which saves a shadow copy of these counters and it's only read only. Now, uh, once we have the counters, we need a way to start and stop them, right? So we have, that's why we need uh, M count inhibit CSR. So M counts in inhibit CSR have a bit corresponding to each of those counters and enabling, uh, setting this M count inhibit actually stops the counter and clearing them will actually run the counter. Now for the uh, accessibility of the counters, is M counter enable. M counter enable controls the accessibility. So if the bit is set, the supervisor mode cannot, uh, uh, will access it. But if the bit is cleared, supervisor mode cannot access it. Now, there is a corresponding S counter en enable register also, which controls the accessibility of user mode and it can be accessed by the supervisor mode. Again, M counter enable and M count, M count enable, as the name suggests, the prefix suggests M. It's only readable and writable by <coughs> the machine mode. So uh, what all we need, uh, what is exactly is missing to have full perf support. First, supervisor mode needs to access the event on the counter registers. They need to start and they should be able to start and stop the counters. Now they need to enable and disable the access also, access bits also. Now, the simple solution would be to go ahead and add those bits, uh, enable, uh, enable those CSR to be readable and writable from supervisor mode. But since RISC-V is continue, uh, it's an evolving specification and it's continue to be backward compatible of the release specification, it's not that simple. We cannot just go ahead and make an incompatible change. That's why uh, the solution that is uh, adopted is an SBI PMU extension, which allows the supervisor mode to perform these operations uh, for the, while accessing uh, the counters. Now, <clears throat> the SBI is an, basically an interface between supervisor mode and the machine mode, and any privilege operations that a supervisor mode cannot do, basic uh, allows the uh, SBI call allows the supervisor mode to execute those functions in M mode on behalf of S mode. So that's why there's a SBA PM extension that was proposed and is part of the official SBA specification now, which enables a uh, supervisor mode to have these uh, features in PUF. But SBA extension is not always uh, sufficient because there are other support we need from the privilege spec itself because to support counter overflow, we do not have an interrupt number so we cannot do anything about it so we need an interrupt number from uh, privilege specification for counter overflow once the counter overflow happens the supervisor mode interrupt handler gets called now in those in that interrupt handler it needs to know which of those counter actually overflowed right otherwise it doesn't know which counter to uh, it doesn't know how to compute the overflow value of those counters and also there is no mechanism of event filtering. So for all these features, we need an ISA extension, which is uh, which was proposed and is on its way to be uh, frozen, which is known as SCOF PMF. So we'll go over each of these extensions one by one and understand uh, what exactly these extensions have so to enable or uh, to address these issues. So first, let's uh, let's take a look at the ISA improvements. So first, uh, the SCOP PMF extension. I know the SCOP PMF, the number, uh, the abbreviation is really tough, at least for my town. But there is a reason for it. It was not abbreviated uh, randomly, right? So the SS stands for the Privileged Arc and Supervisor Level extension while the COF stands for counter overflow and PMF stands for the privilege mode filtering. Since there are 
our risk five is extensible there are so many extensions we need a proper qualified meaning of these uh, extensions so that in future by just reading the extension name we could uh, able to understand what exactly this extension uh, mean now this extension is very close to being frozen it's uh, currently under public review it went to public review uh, i think uh, last week two weeks back and there's a 45 day period so after that it can be frozen uh, it's available at this link and also in the isa day google for uh, google group so you can take a look at it uh, if you have any feedback feel uh, please uh, give us the feedback this is the phase where uh, we collect the feedback from the wider audience and incorporate into uh, chain make changes according to those feet <coughs> <coughs> excuse me now the beauty of the uh, this extension is it's simple it does not add a lot of uh, new csr which requires a lot of which requires a lot of uh, modifications in the previous spec so it adds only one generic csr and there are uh, in in that generic apart from that generic csr it uses the upper eight bits of mhpm event csr to for overflow and filtering now for rv32 uh, the mhpm event doesn't have a upper 32 bit right it's only defined mhpm event there is no mhpm event h that's why the scope pmf extension also describe uh, defines 29 additional csr just for rv32 so that we can have MHPM event 3H to 31H. Now, how does exactly it uh, handle the count overflow? As I said, the upper eight bits of MHPM event are actually used for counter overflow. So out of those eight bits, the top MSB, the top most, uh, most significant bit 63, bit 63, defined as the overflow bit. So whenever the counter overflows, this bit is set and then interrupt is generated. So since uh, both are related, interrupt generation and counter overflow <coughs> is related, uh, it also acts as an interrupt, enable and disable bit. And it uh, hardware should only generate interrupt when this bit is cleared. And this bit is uh, to, if you want a event not to generate an interrupt, then you need to set this bit. Uh, you need to always set this bit so that interrupt will not be generated. Now we know how to uh generate the interrupt but we need an interrupt number right that's where uh the new uh bit number in all the pending and enable registers uh come into picture the bit 13 is assigned for counter overflow if uh, the hardware platform doesn't support scop pmf then it's always uh must be hardware to zero and for the virtualization case the advanced ar ar interrupt architecture specification handles the overflow interrupts Similarly, uh, the SK, there is another CSR which I discussed previously that one new CSR that was added is SCOUNT OVF to understand uh, in the interrupt handler, supervisor more need software need to know which of this uh, counter overflow. So it's a 32 bit only register that contains SADO copies of OF bits. That's the most significant bit of the MHBM event, the OF bit of each registers so that it knows that okay this event overflow this event overflow remember it but even if it's a 32 the valid OF bits defined are mhp 3 to 31 so we have only 29 that are valid so so then obvious question is what happened to the cycle and instruction because cycle and instruction corresponds to <coughs> 0 and 2 and then you don't have an overflow bit for that so because uh that was not at uh, because it's not supported in the scope pmf what we can do is if scope pmf is supported so, uh, we can use the programmable counters to monitor cycle and instruction as well and uh, and then it will just use it will be used as a any other uh, event rather than a fixed event now uh, similarly m counter enable bit is required and the bit it needs to be set to have access to these uh, bits in scout IVF. Now, last part is event filtering, which is uh, not too complicated because uh, it defines a bit for each privilege mode. And if that bit is set, counting of events is uh, prohibited if the code is being executed 
uh, CPU is being executed in that privilege mode. Now that's all for the SBI PMU extensions. That uh, sorry, that's all for the risk five ISA PMU extensions. Now let's take a look at the SBI PMU extensions. Now is so SBI PMU extension provides an uh, interface for supervisor mode software to discover the details of the hardware counters to configure them to start and stop them. In addition to that, it also provides a set of firmware counters, firmware performance counter where while running your workload, you can analyze the performance of the firmware as well. If uh, let's say your for some reason a uh, firmware is uh, performing poorly, these events can be used. It also an access uh, give you an access for entire uh, all the raw events that are defined in the micro architectures and then it uh, exposes those through event IDs. Now supervisor mode uh, one good thing is supervisor mode is abstracted away from the hardware uh, counter ID so it works on a logical counter ID, counter IDs which should be returned uh, to supervisor mode software upon request by the M mode implementation or M mode runtime firmware. And the specification is already part of SPAV 0.3 and it's already frozen. You can find the specification at this link. Now, uh, taking a deep dive into the PMU extensions, it has different kind of events. Uh, three of them are hardware events. First two are uh, general events and the CAS events. These are one-to-one -one mapping between <coughs> The events defined by the uh, Linux puff and then there is hardware raw events that uh, any CPU can define the micro architectural event that they want and uh, by specifying raw event uh, the CPU knows that uh, sorry the PMU framework knows that it's a raw event that's going to be monitored by the uh, CPU. Now there are also firmware events now since uh, SBA is a big uh, component in risk 5 depending on what platform are you using <coughs> <coughs> excuse me uh, you may have to rely on SBI for IPI and timer also for expense also risk 5 I specification doesn't allow um, the misaligned uh, load or store so if in case of a misaligned load store there's a trap and then it's uh, transparently handled in open um, open SPA, which is the uh, M mode uh, default firmware in uh, risk five. Now all those trap events can also be monitored using Perf now. Looking at the functions. <coughs> so the first function basically gives you the number of counters that uh, the hardware supports. Second one gives you the details information of those counters, such as uh, what's the width of those counter, what's the CSR that's, remember these are the logical counter, right? So what's the CSR number for that counter? And then uh, the third function uh, gives you a LAG approach of finding a proper counter for a specific event. So this gets called when a perf event in it actually gets called. So only when you are running perf, then only <coughs> config matching is called. Other two are uh, started during the boot. Now during the config matching, uh, the M mode firmware figure out what is the correct, uh, what is the valid uh, counters uh, for this event. And then it, uh, try to matches this counter between uh, among the IDX base and mask that's being passed from supervisor mode. Now, once it finds, uh, once it found the counter ID for an event, it can start and stop using uh, these functions. The flags uh, represent a uh, different uh, context for those start and stop. Let's say you want to, it's a reset stop. Uh, you are resetting during the stop rather than just uh, st uh, start and stop. So that flag can be used or let's say you want to use not use the initial value that's being passed uh, in the fourth parameter. That's when you can use the stat flags. Now remember uh, <coughs> to read a hardware counter <coughs> to read a hardware counter 
we have the um, counter info that was being saved but uh, so that we can read the hpm counter directly that csr number we can read that directly but for firmware we need to make an additional call to get the firmware read value in the uh, by passing the logical counter id now that's all from the specification side so we have addressed all the specification requirements uh, that have been gone in recently to make a to make perf a full uh, feature parity with all other architectures now let's look at the implementation what exactly is there and what are under current development in terms of implementation so first uh, take a look at how perf exactly works so the perf is a user space tool so you run it uh, from the user space so when you ru actually run it you try to uh, make a system internally tries to make a system call to get into the kernel kernel creates a perf event object and that perf event objects is depends uh, type of that perf event object depends <coughs> what kind of event you are monitoring if you are monitoring a trace point or software events it will create those type software events are basically context which are page faults trace are f trace or k props u props but if you are using a hardware event which is in this case uh, we are mostly dealing with the hardware events because we are dealing with uh, performance counters of the cpus and uh, so it will create an hardware perform hardware uh, pmu uh, so hardware perf event so which can be monitor which can monitor all the cpu uh, related events or hardware events for the former event that i described we still continue to use this because we do not have another option or generic firmware counter so we treat firmware events as an raw events once we have data available that's being uh, that will be written into a ring buffer that's uh, a map in the beginning and <coughs> user space tool <coughs> will continue to read that ring buffer to uh, give you the required data you need now uh, for the linux perf implementation as uh, i explained in the beginning the support was very basic and is implemented under arc risk 5 so you can't really extend it also and you can't use any programmable counters currently we have uh, moved the implementation to driver perf and it's a completely new driver uh, that's uh, it's a platform driver that's being uh, probed based on dt parameters and it implements the impl completely SPI PMU extension and SCOF PMU extension. So the interrupt overflow is being supported through discovery, uh, through DT discovery. And the good thing about this new driver is that all the core perf functionalities are abstracted in the core library. And only SPI related functions are in the SBI specific driver. Now, tomorrow, if there is an alternate approach to uh, SBI for risk 5 as describes main mantra is to be extensible we can easily extend this so that <coughs> the uh, the new driver can continue to uh, use different methods but continue to use the basic code per functionality for risk 5 similarly uh, if there is an interconnect that has uh, a PMU and you want to use that interconnect pmu counters you continue to use that uh perf core functionality perf library and you only implement the interconnect related functionality in the interconnect uh, pmu driver or any other pmu driver this also gives us a way to if the to support the legacy driver so the legacy driver is rewritten like when i say legacy means if uh, a platform is running you are running older firmware where SPI PMU extension is not available, or let's say you are running uh, older hardware where even M count in it is not supported. In that case, SPI PMU extension will not be available. So in that case, it will fall back to the legacy driver, which will only provide you the what I currently exist is basically the support <coughs> instruction and cycle count. Patches are already available in the mailing list. Uh, please go and review. And if you have any comments, uh, please let me know you can ask your questions in the uh, mailing list as well now uh, the second part of the implementation is open sbi 
So OpenSBI is the default open source, most commonly used open source uh, SBI implementation in RISC V. So it require uh, it implements all the extensions that are required for full PMU, full perf uh, support. It all uh, the SBI PMU extension was already merged in a uh, couple of months back. And for the SCOP PMF, the patches are already available. So it supports all the firmware uh, counters that are defined by the PMU extension. And the good thing is it dynamically detects all the necessary CSRs so that it can be always backward compatible with the previous platforms or older platforms. So if the, there is an older platform that doesn't support M count in a bit, it simply disables SBA PMU extension because there is no point of having SBA PMU extension without starting or stopping the counter, without unprovision to start and stop the counter. Similarly, SCOP IMF extension is also dynamically detected, so as the number of HPM counters and the width of those counter. Now, all the platforms need to define is a mapping between event and the counter. So, it needs to define <coughs> <coughs> which counters are used to monitor which events and then what are the event selector value for that for the generic events and for also for the raw events because the ISA doesn't define the raw any of the raw events or the but the SPA PMU defines the generic and hardware cache events so the platform uh, needs to provide that mapping now there are different ways to provide that mapping one is the DT bindings uh, open is this these DT bindings since this is specific to open SBI these DT bindings are also specific to open SBI so platform can just encode these DT bindings uh, to provide that mapping or if they want they can go ahead and implement uh, their own code and then use the hooks that are already available for this map to use those mapping in the generic uh, SBI code now the generic format that is that's aimed to boot all the platforms in risk 5 relies on the DT bindings by default and if the platform doesn't want the DT binding they always welcome to use the uh, plugins but I would highly recommend to use the DT bindings to make your life simpler. Now the last uh, part of the puzzle is schema implementation. Now there is no existing hardware that implements SCOP PMF right because the extension is recently uh, proposed and then now being frozen. So we rely on QMU to verify our implementation. As the specification was limited in the past, the implementation in QMU was also limited in the past. There are very really less, less support for the counters uh, accessibility. Only read, it was only readable. There was no write support. It was always running and only a cycle and instruction count was there. Obviously, there was no M count in a bit and SCOP PMF. And even the number of programmable counters are fixed. So the current implementation changes all those. First, it makes the number of programmable counters uh, configurable. So you can actually configure how many programmable counters you want. By default, it sets to 16, but you can always uh, pass it as a CPU feature. Same as it uh, uses SCOP PMF also is a CPU feature. So depending on what kind of machine you are using, you can enable or disable it. Now uh, we need M MHPM counter, M counter, we need to wait, read and write. So it enables all those events. It also adds, uh, adds additional perf events such as ITLB, DTLB, load store misses, which are a great way to verify the implementation uh, of perf. Now, uh, since it's also implemented SCOP PMF, if the CPU supports SCOP PMF, it enables the interrupt overflow filtering also. The patches are again available in the KMU mailing list. You can take a look if you have any comments. Uh, either you can email to me or you can email in the mailing list. Now, that's all I had uh, today for the talk. Oh, I have the future walk. How can I forget what's in the future? So the, uh, for the future work, uh, the first goal is obviously to upstream all these uh, implementations in respective projects. Once that's done, uh, we need to support virtualization. So we need to support the PMU, add PMU support in KVM. We need to expose the um, 
this is a proposal we know don't know whether it will accept or not but if we can have similarly how perf uh, generic events uh, where software hardware and uh, trace points if we can add a firmware uh, event also we don't have to use the raw events for the firmware counters we need to obviously verify it in the real hardware and um, we need to support in future we can support the perf sampling for firmware counters as well and uh, another thing as i mentioned the cycle and instruction uh, events account events are uh, not supported in the current account OVF, so that can be dedicated that can be assigned in a dedicated uh, bit so that uh, we don't have to use programmable counters for that and that's it thank you for attending we'll switch back to thank you for listening we'll switch back to the demo mode where i'll be showing a couple of instructions where how the perf is being used kernel So I have already booted here um, a Fedora instance in uh, latest kernel 5.14. Uh, if I scroll up, you can see the command line says that the SCOF is basically true. That means um, we have enabled the SCOF feature. If you look at the OpenSBA bootlog, it also specify, okay, M count inhibit is also supported. SCOF is supported. If you disable this, it will not show SCOF and then interrupt uh, overflow, counter overflow interrupt will not work. Now let's run some instructions. First, we'll start with uh, the basic instruction that we already have that uh, used to work. So if you look at, uh, this is a power start. Let me zoom it a little bit. <coughs> so it's a uh, power start and we are trying to get a count of number of cycles and number of instruction during hackbench which is a standard benchmark for scheduler it takes a couple of uh, seconds to run and then you'd see the details of how many number of cycles and instructions were spent while running this counter and you see that uh, number instruction per cycle is one because <coughs> we use the same number of cycles same host sticks for the cycles and both cycle and instruction count in QMU. Now let's run a bigger uh, command uh, where multiple events are being monitored uh, at the same time. So you'd see uh, the uh, first three are firmware events, which is defined as a raw events, but uh, it's the last bit is set, which indicates it's a firmware event. Then the next two are uh, zero R. So anything that starts with R is basically a raw event, but this doesn't have the most significant bit set. So it's a, it's a hardware raw event and then there is a branch misses and then there is some other QMU even new event that were added recently and then standard cycle and instruction. Now out of these, let me run it and explain. So since we support firmware counters, it will show the firmware counters value. But uh, since we do not support the raw event, it just this is just for illustration purpose. So I have added uh, the DT binding in KMU, like this firmware, this raw event is supported, but uh, internally it doesn't actually count anything. So it's zero, but this raw event is not supported. That's why you see not counted. Same thing as since branch misses event is not <coughs> given in that uh, DT binding mapping, it shows not counted, but all other events that are supported will show you a valid uh, value for those events. Now this is with the perf stat. Now let's uh, switch to perf record. So which is a sampling uh, command. Now we say that uh, we do a uh, collect samples at every 10,000 uh, cycle cell instruction while running Hackbench. So it again takes a few seconds to collect the events and then uh, do a sampling of it. So now we have uh, collected the data you can do perf report and you can see we have a number of cycles and number of instructions that were uh, available samples now if you look at the number of uh, where exactly hackbench is spending 
Now you know that while sampling all these events, Hackbench is spending this much percentage in this function or this kernel symbol. If you go back, uh, try to read the instruction, you will see the similar data because again both are uh, measuring the same value. Now let's take a look at the other event, which is a another uh, TLB store miss event. Now <coughs> this uh, since the number of TLB store misses are less, I am sampling it for uh, only thousand events. So after it run, we know that uh, our data is collected. Now let's do a perf report. Let's see that okay, there are two hundred sixteen samples were collected and in that while running while collecting the samples again this function which was the, uh, the top function in the other one it also tops in the function and then you know that there are these many events are being created and uh, the cpu spends most of the time maximum of time in this function so that's how uh, you can use perf start and uh, perf record to do event counting and event sampling. Um, as I said, we don't support the event sampling for firmware counters. So there is no support. Uh, you can't do perf uh, counter, perf record for the firmware events. I think that's it uh, from my side today. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot for listening in. And uh, from wherever you are attending, either you are in, in person in Seattle or actually watching it uh, from your home um apologies for the uh, coughing in between i had a really bad flu over the last week so i'm still recovering so my coughing and the voice is completely gone because of that <coughs> see here it is again thanks again for attending the session thank you